Hey guys! Hello! I'm Alexis. I'm Christina. And we are... Pit-a-pad. <laughs> <laughs> we were so close. <laughs> this close, this close. You getting closer. Eventually, eventually we'll get it. Eventually. <laughs> it's only week four, no biggie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I actually have something that I've been wanting to talk about. Have you okay. heard about the iCarly reboot? Yes, I have. Yeah. I have. I don't know what to make of it yet. You know, some pretty iconic characters aren't going to be there. Sam and Gibby. And they're bringing in some new characters, which, you know, never heard of them. I don't know. <laughs> I, I really don't know either because I don't know what the plot is yet because apparently like one of them is married now and they have like a child but then what happens to the web show what happened to Sam did she like go to jail <laughs> <laughs> that is totally possible that's a good question like there's a lot of stuff that it'd be kind of hard to just kind of jump into it without giving some sort of explanation so exactly and they left this off with good old creddy and then they said that freddie and and then and carly aren't even getting together whatsoever so now we're just kind of stuck here it's a cruel world we went through the whole show rooting for them <laughs> are you were you a creddy were you a creddy or a seti Honestly, I don't think I was really for either because I kind of saw like flaws in both of them. But I would say more Seti just because I didn't like how like desperate Freddie was. <laughs> I don't know. It was weird, but like it was really entertaining. So in a way, I, in a way, I felt like um, Freddie's character development was literally just. I love Carly with all my dear heart and will she ever notice me? And then when he finally got her, he was like, "Mm, oh, well, I got it. (laughs) It was like it didn't live up to the hype for him or something. Like, (laughs) crazy stuff. Do you remember that one episode where he, um, so he saved, saved her life or something and then she was like, yeah, we can't be together because I think I'll get over you if I remember how you don't like, I remember how normal you are. And I'm like, damn, they could have was... kept that going, but they did it. <laughs> and he was still in love with her after that one. Uh, he was down bad. Like, if there's any definition of the phrase down bad, it was funny. <laughs> He like, was whipped. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Like, he was just willing to do anything. And it wasn't working. Do you remember? I don't know if you remember that episode, but was his name, like, James from, like, Big Time Rush, like, guest starred? Mm-hmm. And Sam and Carly were, like, <laughs> fighting over him. I recently saw, like, a clip from that episode the other day and it just like reminded me of that whole thing but the thing about James is that I had a crush on James when I was young so you know I would have been the mix too because why not James Maslow during that time or just oh my god I would have given my whole heart to him I had a crush on him for like years and he's my favorite in Big Time Rush right now. I'm actually rewatching Big Time Rush oh, really? on Netflix, and it's been a trip because I remember how much I had the whole on simp for James. <laughs> <laughs> I was Kendall staying through and through from the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> nothing changed it. No episodes. Nothing. And like I don't remember like anything about that point in my life when I watched Big Time Rush because like I know it would be like on TV I just have no recollection I just know I saw it and I know what my feelings were (laughs) 
you were like, yes, I'm in love with you. Please, I will give my whole heart to you here. <laughs> right, the start of my stand phase. Oh my God, yeah. Um, I, speaking of big time rush, I just, I don't think I remembered a lot of the songs, but now rewatching it on Netflix, you start to remember, like, you know, like all the songs. Mm. Uh, yeah, it's like it's been engraved in there, and like you just need that refresher, and then you're like, oh my god, it's this song. Oh my god, yeah, I just, and there was always you, even though if you didn't watch that show, you always had one that you were like, I'm in love with you. <laughs> that is so true. That is so true. Because like, even with like, for example, I guess animes and stuff now I just see this one character I don't know who it is I don't know what show it's from but then I like have like a one week phase where I'm like this character is everything to me even though I don't know, <laughs> I don't know anything about them <laughs> yeah the crazy thing is that big time rush they're all like in their 30s now which is insane I know like Carlos has like two kids and a wife and I'm like where did time go he was a teen awesome also, 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 can we talk about how Carlos and Alexa Vega are married now? Like Scott, like Spy Kids and Big Time Rush My Childhood has finally came together on this one couple and they have two kids now. Like, lucky for me, I'm happy with my life. <laughs> I just love that. I always, it always gets me curious. Like, how did they meet? Like, what's the story here? I love it. I feel like they met on Big Time Rush. True. But I don't think I remember that exactly. I don't remember. I think I heard that somewhere. But they must have met. I mean, they were both like, I guess, childhood quote unquote stars. So they must have met like maybe at an award show or something, some sort of get together that had like famous people. I don't know. Maybe she went to a concert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah maybe she went to go see big time rush and fell in love with carlos like we all did at some point in our lives right <laughs> actually speaking of that i saw this tiktok that was like people it was, it's like a trend or it was of people reflecting on who their current fictional crush is versus who their first fictional crush was and i remember you know the show ben 10 Oh my god, you, you had a crush know. on Ben. No. <laughs> it was like one specific alien form of his that was like red. <laughs> Hear me out. It was like red with like four arms. It was like a like a heavy set alien. I can't, I can't. But like I just I had to think about it because I was like, who was it? And that's like my earliest. Like I think I actually had a crush on this alien. <laughs> If you can't see my face right now, it looks like I have no words and I have no words to say. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that trend really were like, it was like way worse. Like, who was it? Have you ever seen that like Foster's Home from like Cartoon Network? <laughs> Where are you going with this? <laughs> like people were saying like blue or like the tall, like, basketball player like the red the red alien thingy with like one <laughs> bad eye or something he's so tall and handsome as hell he's so bad but he does it so well <laughs> like, yeah people really be having crushes on me. but hey maybe it's about personality like i can't judge if i had a crush on an alien <laughs> but... good for you <laughs> and then there's well, normal people who are like danny phantom <laughs> yes that's what I was about to go into I was like I had a giant crush on Danny Phantom like ghost man ghost man like ghost man <gasps> I simped for the ghost man <laughs> absolutely I mean why not he's super pretty like even now I'm just like wow what a guy all those childhood fictional crushes. Do you have anything else to add to the list before I say mine? <laughs> I have to think because I don't remember like all the, because it, 
kind of varied because like there were also live action like it wasn't just cartoons i don't remember i'm sure there was like a troy bolton phase in there somewhere you know high school musical i loved high school Musical. i mean i still do but like back in the day oh yeah i still remember all the songs like i'm not even kidding like if you played one right now i just go full on sing i would i would go musical on you like right. what time is it Come on, say it. <laughs> and what if I don't? Well, then we're just going to have to have that pause in our podcast. <laughs> Summertime. I think at some point in your life, even if you didn't like High School Musical, you had a Zac Efron phase. Like you had that one mo- movie that you were like, Zac Efron looked good in that movie. <laughs> yes. If it Remember- wasn't. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh. <laughs> if it wasn't High School Musical, it was definitely Hairspray for me. Really? I didn't even mm-hmm. know. That's valid, though. But I had I had a number one High School Musical movie. Yes. Zac Efron. I wanted to be Vanessa Hutchins at some point in my life, and we all did. We had a sneaker night into that mood. <laughs> Bro, do you remember what's his name? Well, two different people. So the guy that hold on, I'm gonna have to look this up. Cause it was like the Leventress from Wizards of Waverly Place, that like dark brown hair dude. Oh my god. Um, what's his name? Uh, um David Henry. That his was name the is brother. David Henry. That was the brother. Oh. Jake T. Austin? You mean the small one? No, no, no. I oh. like, oh. <laughs> like he's a child back then. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh my god. What was that guy's name? Because he was his name was Mason, I think, in the show. Oh yeah, the werewolf man. <laughs> yeah. I was into the werewolf man. Who wasn't into the werewolf man, honey? <laughs> yep. And the guy from Hannah Montana, the blonde dude. I don't know if you remember him. Yeah. His name was a. Uh, uh, Damn, I'm. Oh, I used to be a big Hannah Montana fan. Like, I had a cardboard cutout in my room. Bro, I had a DS game. <laughs> I had that DS game. I swear, I think I know which I one you're talking about. I still have it. I think I still have it somewhere. Um, I don't even know what to look up. Hannah Montana Love Interest, maybe? But did you? Oh, did you dress up as Hannah Montana at some point during Halloween? Because I did that in the fifth grade. I didn't actually. I did like Disney princesses. But I think I had a I had a tank top. A tank <laughs> oh, no, top. I a tank top. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I did. And I had a Jonas Brothers tank top too. That I remember. It was blue. Okay, but who was your Jonas Brother? Or who is right now, because they're still together right now. If I remember correctly, I'm pretty sure it was Nick. Pretty sure. I think it was. I was a Joe stan, and I'm still kind of a Joe stan. (laughs) Yeah, I think I've become more of a Joe stan. (laughs) No offense to Nick. Great guy, great singer. All of them are, all of them are, like, decent dudes. I gotta say, they're all married now, and they all, they're all living their best life, so. They are, they're just vibing. And yeah. I respect them. Me too. They, they've been making some really good bops. Oh. Yes. Sucker was such a good song. Yes. That absolutely. whole album is so good. They serve throughout their whole yeah. career. Did you have a One Direction phase? My soul just exited my body. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. And it was, I mean, it was so intense. So, like, I can still recite all their music word by word. (laughs) Me too. And did you have that one point in your room where you just had One Direction posters all over? Because I had that. I didn't have posters. I don't remember. I think it was because we moved around a lot when I was a kid, so I just didn't put any up. But, I, all right. 
no one knows about this, but I'm going to say it because I think, <laughs> I think it's funny now, but I would literally, me and my friend, my best friend at the time, because we were both directioners, we would literally make like covers of like One Direction songs, but like change up the lyrics a little I can't it was so bad like I literally had a like a book with like pages of like the lyrics that we wrote like to the tune of One Direction songs okay let it out let it out (laughs) most of the time it was stupid cringy stuff like oh I wish I could see you in concert like oh I have my whole One Direction story I'd like to tell (laughs) please do so um I was a Liam girl even though now I think he's not the best looking one. But back in the day, he was my everything. Like, I love Liam so much. So back in, this was good old-fashioned high school. Okay, this was like the peak. This is like freshman, sophomore year of high school. And my friend had, so they had, they pulled out all these Team Vogue covers and they all had different members on them. And my friend got the Liam cover and I got the Harry cover. And I literally paid her 10 bucks to trade with me. We actually went outside in the courtyard in the high school and just went, do you have the cover? Like as if we're like selling drugs or something. And this, and she's like, yeah, I have the cover. You have the Harry cover. And I'm like, yeah, I got the Harry cover. Here you go. And we were just like walk nonchalantly to class. And I was like, I still think about that sometimes. And I go, damn, I was so freaking whipped that I thought that the cover was so valuable that I had to trade it like drugs. <laughs> That's crazy. I respect that though. I respect the hustle because I would have done the same thing. <laughs> Dude. I was, yes, we all had that phase in our life where we're just like, well, I mean, directioners, of course. If direction, directors all had the phase in our lives where their whole life was one direction. Like, Absolutely. I think I, I never bought an album because I knew sort of in my mind that I would grow out of it eventually, which is kind of weird that I think about it now. But I... I had a genuine group of friends and we would have different members and some of my friends would actually buy the One Direction dolls. Do you remember the One Direction dolls? I do remember the One Direction dolls. Those were insane. They were. And so basically my friends all bought one. My friends, my friends like begged me to buy the Liam one. I never did because eventually I, I grew out of it, you know, like as a person does. And, um, and I just, I didn't have the urge to buy it anymore over time. But I think about it sometimes. What if I still had Liam doll just hanging out in my room? <laughs> Stop. Dude, so, so I'm just going to add on to that. So my my friend, my friend, my best friend, um, she actually brought her Liam, her Louie doll. She brought her Louie doll to college. Stop. <laughs> she did. She did. I love her to death but it was probably the most funniest thing ever is that she brought it and we would and (laughs) and it would just be hanging out on top of my printer and and we would just be having it in like a freshman year we lived in the same dorm together we lived like we were roommates and basically she would have it out in the printer and I was like yes this is a thing that we have in our room and our room our RAs would come in and then just they just wouldn't say anything she just wouldn't say a single thing she would just go and then she would like check the room and then walk out (laughs) oh my god that's so funny because I I was a Louis girl like hard or like I was like it was so bad that I was drawing like freaking carrots and stuff everywhere you remember that joke oh my god the carrot jokes it was so bad like my my friend from my one birthday in middle school got me like a card it was like super chunky and when you like lifted it and pulled it out it was like a pop-up of all the members and it played like what makes you beautiful (laughs) oh my god I still have it it just doesn't work but I still have it because I was like you will never see this like anywhere like ever again 
Actually, now that I say that, did you have a five seconds of summer phase? I, okay. My story with five seconds of summer is that um, I saw them in the Alamo Dome. Um, I think I was in high school still. And they were opening for One Direction during that Correct. time. Yep. And um, I didn't really know who they were. My friend saw them the year before. And then she was like, I love Five Seconds of Summer. And I was like, who are they? And I saw them and I was like, they're kind of cute. I mean, they're okay. Um, and then I just, it kind of like peaked. It kind of like went up and then it just kind of dwindled. Like, I don't think I remember having a face. I don't even remember their names, to be honest. I feel so bad. Um, but recently, I listened to Young Blood. Young Blood was pretty good. That out, that that whole song was pretty good. I gotta say. And then it just kind of like, for me, I just felt like it plateaued, and then it went Young Blood, and then it went. Hmm, I forgot who their names were. I'm so sorry. <laughs> How about you? It was bad. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, like. How do I explain it? I guess to put it into context, imagine that we're back in 2016 and we just got into K-pop for 2015. Okay. My bad, 2015. It's that like when you're new to it and you're making like all the like really cheesy jokes and you're like super hype about it and everybody else is relaxed. So like I was just too excited, too into it, too like oh my god, I will die for that. It's like mm, great music though. <laughs> And sometimes I wonder, like, how it was that intense. I don't know. Middle school me was wild. Because <laughs> it was like One Direction kind of transferred into Five Seconds of Summer, but it was, like, simultaneous. <laughs> so it was just, wow. like, one big mess. Yeah, I know. Great times. I mean, that whole history that we have in general, I feel like we we all have the same kind of history when it comes to, like, favorite boy bands that we like, because we're, like, around the same generation-ish. Mm-hmm. So, although I, I thought I'm older than you, it's, like, we're, like, Disney Channel-wise, we're still kind of, like, on the same, the same kind of road that we went on Nickelodeon-wise, too. Um, another, I don't think. But yeah, when it comes to like boy bands, you probably had all the phases together. You know, like Big Time Rush is my first. Uh, I think Joe's Brothers probably first. So that was like between that same round of time. Mm-hmm. It was Joe's Brothers and then Big Time Rush. No. Oh my God. <laughs> I just remembered. Do you remember the Naked Brothers band? I don't know if you were there. No, stop. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember. Oh my God. That just like brought me back. Oh my god. Yeah, they were my first boy band, I have to say. I don't think I knew a lot of their stuff. I was pretty young at the time, but like, that's crazy. Do you remember Crazy Car? Crazy, yeah, 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 easy car. <laughs> I think I do, actually. The crazy thing is that Nat Wolf and Alex are doing really well for each other now. Their careers are so, like, they're actually acting and doing things and music and producing. And I feel so proud of them knowing that I saw like, Alex was always one year older than me. So I, I never like, when I was young, I was like, now nah, Wolf is so attractive because he's so much older. And now I look back, I'm like, Alex was literally one year older than you. And he looks, back then I look back and I thought that Alex was like so much younger than me because he looked he had a baby face. He always had a baby face very true and it was just really interesting because people always tell me they're like I like Nat better than Alex and I'm like how old were you and they're like 19 now and I'm like Alex was so much older than you sweetheart (laughs) (laughs) really the only way I could tell them apart sometimes was like the mole that Alex has yeah 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 also Alex had that curly hair when he was young I think he still has it Mm mm-hmm yeah great dudes great band interesting name especially for a children's show like technically i guess yeah apparently like 
they didn't I think the parents didn't like the way that the show was going so they canceled it it's only I think we have like three years worth of seasons mm. that's interesting actually I have so many like things that I've been thinking about to talk about okay my sister and I were talking about Disney princes and rating those and I wanted to know if there was ever one that you kind of like I guess had a you know like a childhood crush on if you you know childhood crush on I it could be still... a current crush hello <laughs> <laughs> if Flynn Rider came out of complete nowhere and told me that he was in love with me I would run away with him I, I say it my full chest. Flynn Rider, I would die for you. <laughs> Bro. <laughs> You're so right. You're so right. Flynn Rider. Flynn Rider. Yes. Because I'm a sitting people, here. I saw a lot of people talking about Prince Charming, Flix and Norella, and I was like, no. No. <laughs> He's all right. <clears throat> Excuse me, but if you put Prince Eric in front of me. Hello? Oh, yeah. Prince Eric. Hello? Prince Eric. <laughs> yeah. Don't like, because my, <laughs> my sister was watching Pocahontas and I was like, don't even talk about John Smith. I don't want no John Smith in front of me, bro. <laughs> we don't want this white ass bread. It's okay. <laughs> no, nah, but I'll take, I think it was Lee Shang, right? From Milan. Ooh, yeah, Li Shang. Li Shang, my bad. Tough guy, honestly, yeah. Aladdin. Oh, magnifique. Um, Prince Naveen. Oh, my God. <laughs> Prince Naveen. Yeah, so good. Prince Naveen swagger. Like, <laughs> yes. Good stuff. Yes. What about Kristoff from Frozen? Um... He's not my type, but I know a lot of people who do find him attractive. So they're all valid too. I feel like I'm attracted more to the kind of person he is more than like the physical. Like I think he's a great guy. He's got a good heart, but like he's like cute at best. Sounds mean, but what about like Tarzan? Um, I prefer Tarzan with the clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a haircut <laughs> oh I forgot about Hercules too I feel like Hercules is like I don't know I'm not sure if I sim. I guess to put it plainly the thing about me is that too much muscle is a little bit too much muscle for me I'm I like hmm, I like a little bit of muscle but not like you're killing me here, you know? For sure. For sure. Just a little bit of beef. A little bit of beef. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my favorite Disney princess movie is The Little Mermaid. So me and Prince Eric, we're tight. We're tight. You guys are like best friends. You guys call each we other are. all the time. <laughs> Yeah, I freaking love that movie. So good. Oh, I forgot to mention, do you prefer Prince Adam from Beauty and the Beast as the Beast or, like, as himself? As himself? <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you got a thing for the Beast? <laughs> Are you going to say something here? <laughs> I'm... Hey. If I need to be a furry for one man, I will. I support you and all you do you know this <laughs> I don't know what it is about him like when he becomes like a human I don't know it's just it wasn't the vibes hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. maybe there's an underlying issue here that I need to discuss <laughs> Not the live action, though. Live action, just both ways, was kind of like, what? But, yeah. Yeah. 
I have a childhood thing with Belle, Beauty <coughs> and me. the Beast, because it was my first ever Disney Prince movie, and I automatically fell in love with Belle. When I was young, I used to pretend to be Belle. I dressed up as Belle for many, many years when I was a kid. So um, and and so basically, I have this thing for Prince Eric, Prince Adam, Prince Adam. His name is Prince Adam. Adam yes. And and when he turned to a bee, he turned like back to himself. I always remember that like face he had. He was like, <gasps> and I think I remember like his eyes were so beautiful. And I think I always remember his hair being so like beautiful and luxurious that I think it's one of the childhood things that I'm like, this is a man. Like this is what a man looks like. <laughs> That is so valid, though. Although it's kind of changed over the years, like, my type has definitely changed, or, like, significantly, significantly from, you know, a beast turning into a human, but <laughs> it's it's definitely one of those childhood things that I'm, like, I think I find him attractive because he had this transformation, and she still chose to love him as a beast, and then as turned to a human, she realized how like how she broke his spell and how they're supposed to be together forever and that's why I guess my first kind of input and happily ever after it's like one of those childhood moments where I'm just kind of like this is a happy lover after this is what love's supposed to be like <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing they always gave me like this impression like this is what love should be like and now as an adult I'm like what is this <laughs> exactly like, what is this exactly like why can't i be a singing mermaid you know <laughs> where's Actually, my ball gown transformation <laughs> exactly where am i speaking candle and clock servants <laughs> not servants best friends i guess besties ah uh, yes my uh my closet that speaks to me and helps me pick out what the things to wear instead of like real life where I have to figure out my own clothes the truth the truth where are my little rats from Cinderella (laughs) my color coordinated rats I used to have I don't know if you ever saw those um but it was like a joystick game that you could plug into your like tv like, it was literally just, like, a singular joystick with, like, a couple buttons on it that you plug in. And then you would play, like, different, like, little mini games. So I had one of those for Spongebob. <laughs> and I had one for the princesses. And there was, like, a Cinderella mini game where you would play as the rats running away from a cat. Like, you had to, like, collect cheese and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I have so many memories of random Disney princess stuff. And the funny thing is... I was more of like a tomboy growing up like I didn't like dolls I didn't want anything to do with any dolls or Barbies or anything like that I wanted like cars like Transformers or like the Avengers stuff like that and then my sister who's four years younger than me she would watch that kind of stuff and obviously like she wanted me to watch with her so I'd be like in middle school and I'd be like I have been missing out on all this (laughs) So, like, excuse me, when Frozen came out and I went to watch it with my sister, I knew all the songs. I have to admit it, I was almost, like, worse than my sister was. Dude, same. I had, even as, like, an adult, like, I count myself as kind of an adult, even though I count myself as a young adult, because I don't count myself as being an adult yet, technically speaking. But I had a Frozen phase. I had a Frozen phase, yeah. in my, and especially when it came out, I knew remember all the songs. The second movie, I remember all the songs. If you played them all, I would. Rem- I had the soundtrack on Spotify, and it was one of my top soundtracks of those years that they came on because I would never stop listening to them. Um, <laughs> yep, <laughs> definitely. The second movie, like. When did the second movie come out? I think I was already was I already an adult when that came out. Was that two years ago? Yeah, that was a couple years back. Uh, twenty nineteen. Yeah, I was. I was literally already an adult when it came out. But like, if you play one of those songs right now, I got you. Literally, yeah. I personally think, opinion wise, the second one's better than the first one, but that's on me. No, I agree. It was something about. Like, 
like I guess kind of the message but I feel like the music was so powerful in the second one at least to me like I had this <laughs> those songs on like repeat and I like the story I don't know it was just good exactly it's all good stuff this movies all are good, stuff. good I have no problem admitting that princess movies Ooh. did you ever see Moana I did, but I'd only watched it, um, I think I watched it, like, later. I don't think I watched it, like, as soon as it came out. I think I watched it, like, on Disney Plus, as soon as, like, it came on Disney Plus. Right. But I was later to the game, but I had, I, I enjoyed it, definitely. Yeah, my sister had more of a face with it than I did, but I think it's a good story, and I like the music. It's not one that I'm, like, oh, my gosh, over, but I still like it. What's your all-time favorite Disney movie? This counting, this counting um, all the Disney Prince movies, all the Disney Prince movies, and all the sequels. Isn't Marvel also under Disney, though? Because I'm a huge Marvel fan. No, 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 no. We're talking about Disney, the company here, and not, like, as, like, an enterprise that it is. Okay. That, Okay. D- does that not count Pixar either? Because no, yeah, no like... Pixar. It has to be Disney, Disney. Oh my gosh. Um, you know what? Count Pixar. Count Pixar. They're 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 valid enough in this case. Count Pixar. I don't know what to think about now. Does the Hunchback of Notre Dame? What, what does that fall under? Because that's one of that's, my favorites. That's Disney Disney, but that's, that's still Disney. count as like Disney princess esque. True. Mm hmm. Well, let, let me think about Pixar. Well, do you have a favorite while I <laughs> thought? I love the Goofy movie. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I ever watch that? that? It's I so love good. the Goofy movie. Wait, no, I love the Goofy movie. I was just surprised that you would say it. I love it with all my yeah. dear heart. I listen to um, Eye to Eye more times than I'd like to admit. Yes. Oh, my God. If we're talking Pixar, like the Cars franchise. <laughs> I freaking love the Cars movies. And Monsters University. I don't know if you've seen it, but. Oh, yeah, I've definitely seen that. I've seen it like so many times because my sister had like a phase. Love that movie though. What are some like authentic Disney movies? I can't even think because other ones that come to mind are like Pixar. I mean, there's like plenty, bro. I'm stuck because you said no princesses. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's. I personally wanted to add in Goofy movie, but you can go ahead and add what you want now. <laughs> Does Disney Channel original movies count? Do they count? Okay, then what's your favorite Disney Channel original movie? Because that is a conversation to be had. I don't know if it's a favorite, but like Lemonade Mouth. Oh, yes. Music Lemonade Mouth. Music yes. <laughs> Cheetah Girls. Banger. Cheetah Girls. Yes um let me think of some other ones because those are all like musically inclined have you (laughs) this just came to mind have you ever seen that movie the luck of the irish (laughs) yes i have well that's that's older than you really you watched that i I used to see it like reruns and stuff like every year we even watched it for like yeah for like saint patty's day i don't know why i just thought about that but i love that movie i really used to like that movie a lot yeah, crazy, because it wasn't your time period. It was, like, more of my time period. Right. Do you remember Halloween Town? I love Halloween Town. I still watch on Disney+. Plus. Really? What was that one about the two girls that were, like, twins that were, like, the moon and the sun? Uh, Twitches? Yes. I love that, too. I don't... Was that Disney? Yes. I think it was. What's your highest musical movie? Two, I think. Two. Yeah. Two is classic. 
It really personally, is. personally, three is my favorite really? because it's like a good wrap up to the show. And then the end always makes me cry because I remember my childhood flash before my eyes. That I'm like, wow, I'm old. <laughs> yeah. For sure. So now that we talked a lot about Nickelodeon and Disney, um, do you have any Cartoon Network shows that you would die for? Courage the Cowardly Dog is my favorite little man ever. <laughs> I love that show so much and I know I know it's creepy and like some people can't watch it because it makes them uncomfortable but I just I love that show so much I got like two t-shirts in my drawer <laughs> with courage on it that's valid that's valid I personally I was scared of a lot of Cartoon Network movies when I Cartoon Network shows when I was young because I was scared of a lot of stuff when I was a kid so I look back at now I'm like why were you scared of that it wasn't even that bad um but yeah Curse Cowley Dog was probably one of those but I love Chowder did you watch Chowder I love Chowder mm-hmm. good show oh do you remember uh Codename Kids Next Door oh yeah Dang. Codename Kids Next Door that was good Dexter's Laboratory oh uh, uh, yeah Ed, Ed and Eddie dude yeah keep going keep going you're <laughs> uh powerpuff girls we know oh yes yes flapjack oh my god misadventures of flapjack oh my yeah. god yeah invader zim invader zim uh oh my gosh what are the other ones uh what's that one like cat dog or something like that yeah that was good that was a good one um teen titans both the old one and the like go i watched both of them like the newer animated one scooby-doo scooby-doo I love Scooby-Doo. there's probably a lot more than i'm missing i just can't think of any ben 10 obviously ben 10 you're ben 10. an alien man oh you remember samurai jack oh yeah samurai jack Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. That's what that's called. With Blue. And the little basketball dude. Yeah, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a Power Ranger. I wanted to be the pink one. The pink Power I Ranger. Just, I love the Power Rangers. I forget who it was that I, like, wanted to be. Because I know I wanted to be one of them. But I don't remember which color. I can't think of it. Oh, Total Drama Island or whatever that was called. Yeah. I I think I was too old for that. <laughs> it's definitely one of those ones that I felt like it just kind of was like towards the ending of my childhood. But I can definitely see you enjoying that as, as you were like a kid and stuff because you were like in that generation. So many good ones. Back to Disney. Phineas and Ferb. Phineas and Ferb, discuss. <laughs> yes, I can still recite the opening word for word <laughs> big brain biggest brain all the land it's so Phineas good. and Ferb one of or if the best show on Disney Channel but I said what I said that's fine best co- animated Disney Channel show there you go what are some other Disney Channel shows other than like Sweet Life of Zack and Cody we had Hannah Montana that's so Raven Wizards where everybody plays. Yeah, Wizards. Kim Possible was another good one. Oh yeah, Kim Possible is great. I can't remember. I'm sure there's other ones that I saw. I just don't remember. Lizzie McGuire was so good when I was a kid. Did you ever watch The Proud Family? Yes, I love The Proud Family. It's still on Disney. It's on Disney Plus. I've been watching it. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You're right. Um. Oh, American Dragon. American Jake, Jake Long. Long. <laughs> I love that show. I totally forgot about it. As an Asian American, Jake Long. 
Jake Long was like the closest I could probably get to Asian American representation during that time period. It was just like everything to me. Um, yes. Oh my god, yeah, Jake Long, all like the all like the really cool animated Asian Asian dudes. They were all really important to like my growth as an Asian American, which is so weird. But yeah, definitely just Jake to show Long. That representation helps. Representation does help. It helps us so much to like see at least like an animated dude that you're like, hey, that guy is the same race as me. Isn't that great? <laughs> right. Oh my god. Sunny with a chance. Sunny with a chance. Miss Demi Lovato's roots. Yes. Although mm. I've been watching her documentary lately. Have you been watching it? I have not, no. Is it good? It's heavy. It's very heavy. She talks a lot about like yeah. her drug usage and her her problems with like therapy and stuff like that in the past. And she's she's been really strong, definitely. Her um her childhood acting career messed her up real bad. <laughs> but I she's strong. She's so strong. Oh my god, she's amazing. Yeah. People who grow child actors. I don't know how they do it sometimes. It seems like a lot. Because even from like five years old, there's already so many expectations for you as you grow. It's crazy. Exactly. Exactly. Did you uh, watch Good Luck Charlie? I don't know if that was like two years later. Oh, no, I watched it. I just didn't, I watched the first couple seasons and after that it kind of dwindled into my teenager years. Correct. But definitely I remember I I saw Charlie grow up a little bit more than she did the first season and then I just it just kind of I became a teenager and it became like one of those moments where I was like I don't want to watch kids shows anymore. I'm following boy bands now. (laughs) Although I am back to where I was before and I love cartoons like I would oh I think I only watch cartoons. If I have a choice, I watch cartoons or I I just, I don't know. I, I don't think I watch much else. And I feel kind of like most people who are like, are you like still a kid at heart? And I'm like, yeah, I'm still kind of like a kid at heart, I guess. I know. For some reason, I feel like this happened with a lot of us, but we almost felt like guilty at some point as we were growing up for still being interested in it at least it happened to me so I tried so hard to be like oh like that's kid stuff and now I'm like ah the kid stuff <laughs> <laughs> I've been having a really nostalgic phase recently yeah. um I've been re-watching Avatar The Last Airbender definitely ah. one of those Asian American move uh, American shows that I was yep. like I basically grew up with that gave me representation when I was a kid um and I've been I rewatched I've been watching Ab- Adventure Time on Hulu oh, yeah. um what else have I been watching I've been watching I've watched a little bits and pieces of um Sailor Moon on Hulu oh yeah yeah and um Cardcaptor Sakura that was like my childhood anime that I would like watch every single day for definitely because i would literally get up earlier for school like an hour before the bus came just to watch like tv you know (laughs) early morning while i was eating breakfast and i feel like it was always like Yu-Gi-Oh or something (laughs) Yu-Gi-Oh or pokemon yeah i swear it was always that and i never really understood it because i was like really little and it wasn't really processing i just remember like seeing it with my eyes (laughs) all the time on tv yeah, two four kids, two four kids at seven a.m. That's what I was doing in the morning. I was watching seven a.m. Um, cartoons on the small little television that I had back then, and I would just put it on a little 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 table in my room, and I would like eat cereal. Eat, or did you have the little bowls with little straws? Because I had. I think those. I had one. Yeah, I think I had one. <laughs> <laughs> or the or the um the cereal straws. Like the Apple Jacks ones. I used to love the Apple oh Jacks ones. Oh my gosh, yes, the Fruit Loop ones. 
Oh, yeah. The best. <laughs> I actually heard that they were going to bring them back this year, like for a limited time. I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care where I got to go. I'll be first in line, bro. Because I think they said in the fall, because I remember talking to a friend of mine and I told him, like, I will skip class. Like, I'm not, even skip- joking. <laughs> <laughs> not even joking. For those cereal straws, anything. Oh my God. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Everyone's always like, if you're born past 2000, you don't understand us 90 kids. And I'm like, they're literally the same like area chunk of childhood, like to be really quite frank with you. Of course, I'm like a late, I'm a late 90s baby. So I don't, I don't, I don't discriminate against 2000s because you guys are like only like, two years older than me, to be honest. So that's maybe two or three years old, younger than me right but it's always like those early 90s kids who are like you don't understand me you don't watch even stevens when you were like eight and i'm like Mm -hmm. i was only seven (laughs) but i still understood everything sweetheart (laughs) it's also like a cultural thing like okay maybe we all grew up in the states but it doesn't mean that you're going to be watching the same things exactly i'd be watching like soap operas with my grandma and i'd be into it i'd be like oh my god they just kissed stuff like that (laughs) they just kissed (laughs) it's like a key drama right soap operas are like seriously intense like you know those memes that go around where it's like cries in spanish or like shoots you in spanish like it's yeah it's exactly as dramatic as they make it out to be exactly and i mean like everyone always expects everyone to have cable on their kids like not everyone had cable when you were like i had moments in my life where i didn't have cable like i i remember i had like maybe in the middle of my childhood years i didn't have cable i had cable in my first section of my life and then later on in life my parents had jobs again they they had their they we had cable again so everyone is like you didn't watch this. We didn't have the same childhood. And like, we're born the same year. Like, of course I didn't have the same childhood because I didn't have cable, honey. I was watching PBS Kids. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, like, I used to literally have, what what movies was it? I think it was The Amazing Hulk and then the first Spider-Man movie. My mom had those on VHS. And that's what mm. I spent my day doing. I watched it as soon as it was done, rewind it, watch it again. Like, you know, you do what you can with what you have, but it was entertaining for me. And then at some point, obviously, I don't remember everything in my childhood, but I became conscious of the fact that I was watching, like, Disney Channel and stuff at some point. I just don't know when, but I know it mm-hmm. wasn't always that way. Yeah. See, you had VHS tapes. Everyone is like, Gen Z doesn't understand us. <laughs> well, you guys had VHS tapes. You guys had MP3 players. Like, come on now. Just yeah. because you're Gen Z doesn't mean that you were like, oh my God, I'm banging an iPad at age five. You know? <laughs> right. Yeah, like, that's, that's the thing. Because right now, me being almost 20 years old, and I have a brother who is seven. And there's such a, like, stark contrast between how he's growing up versus how I am I think it's just like I think we're on the same length when it comes generational wise but I feel like after it reached like maybe 2006 2007 ish I would say around that time period is when technology started like boom and everything Mm -hmm. so I guess kids were born after that time period like my cousins my cousins are way younger than me I think the youngest is like eight now and she was brought up with pure technology like my um my my cousin my my old like he's kind of older than her but he's still like 10 11 12 ish great like 12 ish years old and he had an ipad at like age six and um what else and he recently got a switch during the pandemic which i don't know how my aunt did that but she had she got she actually paid extra to get him a switch for his birthday and i'm like my parents would never buy me a switch at that age never 
Yeah, like my brother, were like at six, had a had a smartphone, and I was like, what? it literally. Made, <laughs> I love him with all my heart, but it, like, it makes me so mad. Not because I didn't have that, because I don't care, but because now he can contact me any second he wants. <laughs> And I'm like, you should be, you know, doing your little homework, doing your ABCs, <laughs> not texting me or calling me saying it's an emergency and then being like, I just want to play Roblox. Like, I will fly <laughs> over there and kick you in the toe myself if y'all don't take this phone away from this seven-year-old. It drives me nuts. When did you get your first phone? Um... It- fifth grade I think it was fifth grade because I remember that I used to like ride the bus and then be home alone for a little bit because my mom had to work late so she was like I want to make sure that you're home so I'm gonna get you a phone so I had like a little I think it was one of those that like had a keyboard which I love those phones to this day it was like this big (laughs) dude I would have been so jealous of you at that age. I swear. I would have been like, this young kid has a slide phone. I I had a flip phone when I was like fifth, sixth grade. I think it was sixth grade when I got my first phone. It was a little blue flip phone. It was like this Aww. big. I think I think it was like, I think it was like before your time too. I don't know. Anyway, I had this phone. It was like this big. I think I still have it somewhere in the storage. And it was like this big and, and like it would, it would, you know, have the cool on, boop, you know, you like have on your phone, you know, like as like a cute little 2000s kid. And I had a little decal in the front. It was like a little like bling bling thing. And it was a oh, Hello Kitty yeah. bling bling thing. I had like in the front, it was like a blue flip phone. I was like, oh my God, I have a cell phone, mom. And then I would feel so, I, I would, I can't text with that phone. Like if I try to go online, I'd be like, no, 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 not online so I'm like my mom calls like pay extra or like I had to press a number multiple times in order to get a letter oh dude I, my first phone was it was pretty old <laughs> back now it was one of those old thousands phones and all my friends had like the cool and sidekicks oh do you do you remember those those like phones that were big and then they had a keyboard at the bottom and then they would the screen would, like, flip did you did you have those did you have those at your time maybe do you remember like a brand or something that I can look up maybe maybe if I look at it I'll remember it was called a sidekick sidekick oh yeah 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 those and they would like have oh. a button and then with like this cook cream would pop up and I thought those were so cool but they'll come out. oh my I lived in LA at that time so all my friends were rich had those and I was not rich so I had the cool little flip phone that I mom I would use in emergency situations my mom needed to pick me up earlier or something oh my god <laughs> that's okay though at least you had something to communicate with exactly it's all we needed back then we just need something to communicate with and then I got um oh man I remember my 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 god sister she had an ipod nano and I thought that was the coolest thing ever I I just like sincerely remember the exact like time and place I was when my mom got the very first like iPhone like that like rounded one that was like what's that called like the 3GS or something oh my gosh what was that I don't remember what the model was but I like remember that old freaking iPhone and I remember exactly what it was when she showed it to me they were kind of clunky back then weren't they like the first like couple iPhones yeah. were, I think they had like the iPods and then they had the iPod touches and then they had the iPod Touch with the camera, and then they had the iPhones. Like that was kind of later in the in the years, don't you think? Yeah. I think so. Two thousand seven was when it was announced. I would have been f- six. So I think it was, yeah, because she ended up getting it. Like I was older by then, maybe like closer to fourth or fifth grade. Oh, it came out in 2008, so I was probably 
like two years later when she ended up getting it or something because I think I was older but I don't remember that little chunky little guy 2007 eight wow 2008 yeah eight. wow shiny year 2008 I always think about the fact that like when they debuted 2008 so that was March 2008 and I was not even 10 yet I was like nine which is wow. insane you were younger than me so you were probably like how old were you during 2008 you were like May 2008 Six? I had just turned seven when they debuted like a couple days later because my birthday's the 19th and they debuted the 25th so wow. I just turned seven years old we were so young we were <laughs> I always say that like what were you doing but why weren't you there during Shiny's debut? You could have seen all the eras happen. And then I realized that I was like 10, inter- interested in Hannah Montana and Jonas Brothers during that time and probably big time Rush. So I was too busy to add another group to my collection. <laughs> <laughs> With no access to like an iPod or technology either. Like how was I supposed to find these men? Oh my God. So I have a story when it comes to, when it comes to Shiny, okay? I didn't realize they were shiny back then, but this was like 2000 and, 2009, maybe 2008, 2009-ish. So Shiny I already debuted for like a year or then. And my friends were watching this. They, they had this the, these old monitors back then, of course. And my friends were watching the um watching videos on the like on, on YouTube. And right. back then YouTube, you know, YouTube was not even like youtube you know youtube was just a couple videos on a screen and then you would like click on a couple videos and you were still having fun and basically all my friends like watching this music video and i was like what's music video it's so weird and i remember specifically it was ring ding dong this was 2009 okay and i was watching and they were watching it was during a summer camp and it was like no summer vacation my mom was posting this kind of summer camp thing with me and all my friends so being like learn math during the summertime which we absolutely hated but we had to do anyway and basically what happened was that I was watching these I was like we were in a break time and I was like what are you guys watching like we're watching k-pop and I was like okay <laughs> and it was ring ding dong and I didn't oh realize God. what it was till later on when I got into camp in 2016 and I was like Oh my God, that's ring ding dong. I feel like every time I think about it, I'm like, my shiny face was faded all along. <laughs> though, because I remember seeing in 2015, like shiny vines of them on like SNL and stuff, and like little clips of like ring ding dong and stuff, just like six seconds. And then like f- fast forward to 2016, I was like, so that's what that was? Like, I could have been here your last year if I had just done extra research. I know. You could have been there during View era. That's probably one of my biggest regrets is not being there during View era. We were there for Press Remember era, though. I'm I know. We were there. We were there. That one. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. So thankful for that. Insane. How, like, I feel like our lives, even though, I mean, you're like, how old are you? You're like four years younger than me, right? Three uh, years younger than me? I'm 19 turning 20, so. Yeah, you're like three years younger than me. Mm-hmm. That's, but like, even then, like, I feel like our childhood is kind of similar, even then, right? <laughs> right. Crazy. This has been very fun. I love being nostalgic. Me too. Especially with people who can relate. Like, sometimes I talk to people and they're like, no, I have no idea what that is. And then, like, the conversation just ends. Because <laughs> if they don't know, then I'm not going to, like, elaborate on it. Exactly, exactly. All right. Let's end the podcast over here, I guess. Sounds good to me. All right. Bye.